One of the biggest questions that I see asked on the internet is what kind of gear should I get to start training for my rifle or pistol? Well, ultimately you don't need any gear to just get out there and start training. All you need is the firearm, the ammunition, some magazines, and the motivation to learn. But equipment can aid in your efficiency and how you're training. So I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some equipment that can assist you. A good starting point for the gear that you need for your training is a good holster for your pistol, provided that's what you're training with. So you've got a few different options. You've got outside the waistband, which is going to be on your belt line, usually, and then you have concealment, which could be appendix, three o'clock, four o'clock, even small at the back, although I don't really recommend that unless it's something like a backup gun. So I wanna go over a few options right here. These are some options from our company, T-Rex Arms. This is a sidecar appendix carry holster that allows you to carry an extra magazine and have the gun. And then there's also the Raptor, which can be configured for appendix carry or small of the back or uh, four, three o'clock. I like to wear this one four o'clock on occasion, although I pr pretty much stick to appendix. And so sometimes what I do is if I'm keeping things really simple is I have my regular concealment holster on, which I'm you know, doing my training from. And then if I transition into shooting a rifle, I shoot my rifle with that same holster on. And all I do is take my rifle magazine, have an extra and throw it in my back pocket. I can still reload from my back pocket pretty fast. I can still get my reps in. I don't need anything crazy if I'm just focusing on certain things. Obviously, we'll get into some other equipment that can help you if you're doing a lot of rifle shooting, but a back pocket can work fine for reloading a rifle, carrying an extra magazine, whether it's an AR or an AK 308, that's gonna get a little trickier unless you have bigger uh, pockets in the back of your pants. So you got your concealment holsters, and then obviously having a good belt can be very beneficial. This is our Nova belt, EDC belt, which is what I wear, and this will support a lot of weight, AR mags, pistol mags, a concealment holster, something like this, which is a, uh, this is made for a Glock with an X300 extra mag. So there's quite a bit of weight going on here, but it can support that just fine. So basic concealment holsters, moving down. If you want to get into outside the waistband and have a little bit more equipment that's, easy, uh, that's easier to access, then you can start running something like this. This is a Mars carrier and it's belt worn. So we have them for pistol and rifle. So you could do you know, one rifle on your belt, two pistol, a little bit closer forward. And then you can have either, you could still potentially run your concealment holster at three o'clock, four o'clock, or even appendix. The, that's something I do actually. I'll have my just appendix holster on and then I'll just take a Mars carrier for, a, for my rifle mag and throw it on right here. Really fast to put on with one of these tech locks which is probably my favorite attachment uh, solution for this type of carrier. I can throw it on really easily. And then I have a magazine that is very uh, easy to access, very efficient. But you can run you know, some outside the waistband stuff on your normal belt, whether it's a leather belt or a Nova belt or something similar. And then you can get a outside the waistband holster like our Ragnarok right here. This has a mid drop to put the pistol grip parallel with your belt for uh, the, the most efficiency you can get. Obviously you don't wanna go too low because then you have uh, excess waist motion or you can do something that's just belt worn like this with belt loops. So this is a X300 Ragnarok that will just take one on the belt. So pretty simple setup. You could have like one pistol, one rifle, and then your uh, pistol itself for very little money. And that's going to allow you to have good efficiency on the range, have some ammo on you, very fast to reload, and you're not just relying on your pockets, although you could do that. Moving on, then we start getting into war belts, battle belts, whatever you want to call them. So here we have our Orion belt. We designed this a few years ago. I've been using a lot of different war belts for the past few years, and I just wasn't a big fan of the options out there. So I set out to design a better one with Coyote Tactical Solutions down in Florida, and this is essentially what we came up with. So this is a over the pants, over the jacket, whatever belt with a non-slip with a non-slip material on the inside to keep the belt from moving around as you run around and do rigorous type activities. I've got two pistol mags here on the side and an STAC Kiwi pouch. These are also available on our site. One 5.56 mag, our dump pouch, which we released recently, which allows me to just throw whatever I want in there. A lot of people think, oh, a dump pouch means you need to, you know, retain your empty magazines on a reload. Well, not necessarily. Dump pouches are usually used for anything but that. They're used for having, you know, full magazines, for doing a lot of courses of fire. You don't want to constantly make trips back to your car, uh, drinks, 
snacks. I know guys that use them for evidence, you know, guys in law enforcement, things like that, or even guys are overseas doing SSE, different things like that. So dump pouches are kind of used for everything. And it's probably one of my most used items on my belt, possibly more than my mag pouches themselves. So anyway, then you've got uh, what I like to recommend to people is having some form of medical kit on the belt. If, you, if you're wearing a war belt already, there's no reason not to have one. You've got room, you can throw one on there. This is a prototype that we're working on, so we're not gonna get into that right now. Then I have a pouch that takes a flashlight or a multi-tool, uh, very, very helpful. There's some room back here between my medic pouch and my pistol on pretty much all my belts. So I can use that room to stick something or I guess just not have anything at all. For holster on my battle belts, war belts, whatever you want to call them, I run the Safariland UBL mid-ride with the QLS system. This allows me to interchange my holsters easily as I'm switching between different kinds of guns, which I do pretty often. I'll switch to, you know, 320s, Glocks, uh, other types of SIGs, HK guns, and so being able to just switch out my holsters easily without having to unthread my entire belt loop attachment is very beneficial. You know, not everybody needs that, but if you are someone that owns a few different pistols or you're someone in law enforcement who's issued maybe a couple different guns, that can be something that's really helpful. So that's the outer war belt system that goes on top of whatever you're wearing. So I can put it on over my jacket right now and it's really awesome. Moving on to the next kind of, the next kind of belt system out there, there's kind of two styles. Now we have a two-piece, and basically the way these work, it's like a competition belt. You have your inner belt, that's Velcro, that you wear in, through your belt loops, and then obviously your jacket or your shirt has to, has to come up so that this belt can then adhere to that inner belt that you're wearing through your belt loops. So it's very stable, it doesn't move around. The main thing that I like about these types of belts, this is a Ronin Senchi, is that it's only one and three quarter wide, so I can attach our Mars carriers or any other type of attachment with a tech lock very easily. So now I can run a bunch of different magazines. This is my Carry Optics USPSA type belt setup. So I have a basic Ragnarok uh, with little rubber spacers in there to try to push it out a little bit so I can grab it easier. And then I have three Mars carriers on this side and I can reload from these nice and fast. I really like them. And then if I need to build this belt out with like a rifle mag, you know, a dump pouch, some other stuff, if I'm changing up how I'm training, very easy to do that. So two piece systems have advantages over, a, over, the, over the belt, over the jacket type system. They each have their pros and cons. I like both. I use them both probably-ish equally. So those are some different options that you can look into. Moving on, we've got what you can start wearing on your torso. So chest rigs and plate carriers. And this could be a whole nother video. I don't have a lot of different systems out here right now. But this is a Spiritus LV-119. This is my preferred plate carrier. I just did a video on this on our YouTube, you can check out. But this allows me to carry some extra mags on the range, have some other, uh, other things, multi-tools, flashlights, medical. I've got the sack pouch right here that has more medical and I also have some batteries here in the front for different things. But that's gonna just depend on you know, what you need a plate carrier for, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do. For most training, I get by with just a belt. You know, I could get by with just shoving mags in my pockets, but obviously having this equipment is really important. And this equipment is all, we believe, part of being a pro Second Amendment person. A lot of people out there think, oh, Second Amendment's about, you know, a bolt gun, a mossy oak shotgun. No, it's about having a modern day musket and then having the equipment to complement that. This should be totally normal to go in conjunction with regular AR-15 type rifles. But for whatever reason, people out there think, ooh, tactical gear, yeah, that, that doesn't have a place with citizens. But AR-15s, I guess, do, but tactical gear doesn't. And that just doesn't make any sense. This is just equipment. Like, it doesn't make me a better shooter, necessarily. It doesn't turn me into anything. It's just stuff to complement my weapon and what I'm trying to do. One of the important things to remember before you start going down this very long rabbit hole of tactical equipment is realizing that it's very easy to get distracted by it. The newest technology, the Gucciest gear, and the coolest camo patterns. And that can distract you from what's really important, and that is your proficiencies and your skills and your capabilities. Ultimately, this gear can help you with your shooting performance, but it's not necessarily going to turn you into an extremely skilled shooter. The only thing that's going to do that is your motivation and your willingness to push yourself to the point of failure and actually get out and start training. And I see a lot of people out there, they think they can just throw money at the problem and get really good at shooting, but that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. 
You have to get out there, you have to push yourself, and you have to train hard. It's, if you dress up a pig, it's still a pig. Like I said, one Charlie. It's a 532, the reload's a little slow. So yeah, I've got one off to the left. Because those were all there before. <laughs>